Hi, I'm Irving. You have just entered Cartertopia. In a secret Nazi intelligence compound somewhere in Germany, Fausta Grebel, special emissary from Hitler himself, is explaining to an arrogant colonel that Wonder Woman is not only real, but she's a threat to the cause. The colonel won't believe it, but she consistently overrules him. He is one insecure little dude, so he is not taking it well. They've cooked up a plan to deal with her. Just how strong is she? This is what the Fuhrer wants us to find out. Operation Fräulein. It will be my pleasure to capture Wonder Woman and bring her back to Germany for you to study. I don't think he likes her much. And find out if she has any unusual secrets. We will make her power ours. I have already a plan. You just get me safely into and out of the United States. Please turn off the lights. The Colonel keeps trying to put his two cents in, but she's having none of it. This is American war hero, Air Corps Major Steve Trevor. The last three times Wonder Woman was seen, she was aiding this man. I will use him to bait my trap. May I suggest, Foyle, that... My plane is waiting. Please have everything ready when I return with Wonder Woman. There's a surprise. The whole world knows Wonder Woman is sweet on him, so he can expect to be a constant target like this. I foresee some rough patches for this relationship. At the War Department, Steve has sent Diana home for the night while he works late. Fausta sneaks in, disguised as a cleaning woman. Oh, sure, Major. W while I'm here, I'll just empty your waste bag. Uh, no, no, don't bother. Uh, some of those papers are top secret, and I personally carry all my waste paper to the incinerator. The next morning, as Diana and Etta are trying to figure out where Steve might be, the phone rings. It's Fausta claiming she found a note on the street in front of a warehouse. It's said to call this number. Whoever finds this note, please call my office and tell them to contact Wonder Woman. I'm a prisoner and my life is in danger. And it's signed, Major Steve Trevor. There are a few things wrong here. First, he wouldn't ask them to contact Wonder Woman because he knows they don't know how. He'd tell them where he was and trust General Blankenship to get him out. Second, I doubt if he'd use an expression like, my life is in danger. That's not military talk, especially when he's had the person call the War Department. But Diana misses those tells. She gets the location where the mystery woman found the note and does her thing. Question, how does she get out of the building? Even if she can sneak past all the guards and other people inside, several dozen people out on the sidewalk are going to see Wonder Woman exiting the War Department and wonder, ha ha, why nobody saw her go in. A better way would be to leave as Diana and have some kind of spot not too far away where she can change unseen, then have several ways she can exit. She really should have consulted me before she did this. At the warehouse, she makes short work of the bad guys while Fausta watches from a concealed spot. No more games. You have to tell the truth now. Where is Major Trevor? The truth is... The truth is exactly what? He is across the aisle. Behind the first bale on the left. Thank you. Fausta instantly sees the implications of the lasso and comes up with a new plan. I will dress as Wonder Woman and appear in public. She will be forced to confront the obvious imposter. But can we handle her when she appears? We must have the proper setting. I know just the occasion. It's a noontime bond rally for federal employees. Not too big, not too small. I know the man in charge of the entertainment. He's 
thinks I am an American colonel with the special services. Next day at the Bond rally, two Wonders women appear. I'm sure you're wondering which of my beautiful friends is really Wonder Woman. Well, ladies, pick up the barbell and we'll find out. Wonder Woman's strength didn't match the weight of the barbell. He puts the lasso on her and learns that her belt is the key to her power. Remove it and she's like anybody else. Steve tries to talk to the bogus Wonder Woman and she blows him off. Why is Wonder Woman wearing a mask? If I had her face, I'd never hide it. Because she isn't Wonder Woman. Come on. He commandeers the taxi and heads after them, but after a while he's afraid he's lost them. Then he hears a plane engine start up. You're still on American soil and you have a good bit of American space to get through before you're on your way home. Are you sure you want to uncover the Nazi rondelles now? Steve jumps out of the car and runs after them, even though the plane hasn't started moving yet. And if he ran the car around there and stopped in front of the plane, they'd be hosed. Too bad he didn't think of that. Just like Wonder Woman, he should have consulted me before he did this. Mueller, look. It's Magic Turbo. Don't let him stop the airplane. Note to self. Next time, get an aide who can take a punch. Instead of leaving him and running over to try and stop the plane, he wastes valuable time interrogating this guy about where they're going. That gives Fausta just enough time to take off. Steve is determined to mount a rescue mission to get her out of the heart of Nazi Germany. Since the general is actually using his brain and not his glands, he says absolutely not. After all, she is Wonder Woman. Certainly she can take care of herself. Go, uh, go rest for a few days. But general, you've got to try and... That's an order, Major. Good soldier that Steve is, he obeys and sits out the rest of the episode. Yeah, sure. He immediately goes to the radio room and gets the text scanning known Nazi frequencies to see if the plane might call their HQ. Calling Colonel Ketterman. Major, Colonel I think Colonel I found what you're looking for. Colonel Ketterman at Operation Starlight Headquarters. We will arrive at 0800 with Wonder Woman. Weird that she's not using any coded signs or anything like that. But if she did, we'd have to use up valuable airtime explaining them to the viewer. That's it. He wanted me to rest? All right. I'll take my first furlough behind Nazi lines. That doesn't sound very restful to me. Etta, you've got to promise to cover for me with General Blankenship. You tell him that I'm resting, like he ordered. Out of town, all right? Yes, Steve. Not to put you on the spot, but please lie for me. He pulls some serious strings, and before we know it, he's on his way to England. Meanwhile, Fausta is back in the land with the arrogant colonel. Congratulations. Now that your job is finished, I will be happy to arrange for your transportation back to Berchtesgaden. That will not be necessary, my colonel. I'm staying here. Much as I would enjoy your charming company, I cannot conduct a proper questioning with unauthorized personnel in attendance. Oh, but that will not be necessary. You will not have to question her. I will do that. <laughs> You're joking, of course. If he thinks he's going to get into a weenie measuring contest with her, he'd better be prepared to lose. He scoffs at the lasso and all the rest and says, that's the kind of thing you hear in children's stories. He wants to interrogate her the old-fashioned way. In England, Steve connects with an old friend who flies bomber missions over Germany, so the next thing we know, he's stowing a parachute and getting ready to break into Operation Fraulein Headquarters. An underground agent named Rojak meets him. Do you have papers? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I am carrying uh, bossy papers. They seem to be in order. Be off the street before curfew, old Jack. You have a hair, Cobra. The Germans know him. That could be good or bad. It could be good because if they know him as someone who's obedient and doesn't make trouble, they'll be less suspicious. It could be bad because they might know him as an informer. 
But right now, Steve doesn't have much choice but to follow him. The Smithers, they are not real. Why'd you let them go? The man they call Rojak is an undercover agent for the Gestapo. Sometimes you have to hate being right all the time. The first time I watched this for the review, I wondered why they told us that up front instead of having a big reveal later on. But then I realized that the way they did it here is actually better because a big reveal that the guy they trusted as a double agent has been done to death. Even by 1975 it had been done to death. Here they just tell us up front, your suspicions are correct, he's a double agent. I like the way they avoided the cliché and just set it out for us. We'll watch Rojak with a very different perspective from now on. I like it. My colonel, I have no desire to usurp your authority. As long as the fatherland benefits, I don't care who gets the credit. We are to discover Wonder Woman's secrets and use them to benefit the fatherland. Then why don't you return to your work and let me do mine? Because we can accomplish our objective so easily with a golden lasso. Still measuring, and he's still coming up short. She puts the lasso on Wonder Woman and starts asking questions. Wonder Woman. Where do you come from? I come from Paradise Island. The Colonel scoffs at this, as most anybody would, but Fausta continues. What makes you so strong? On Paradise Island, there are only women. Because of this pure environment, we are able to develop our minds and our physical skills, unhampered by masculine destructiveness. Stop. Such information is utter rubbish! Women who don't need men to tell them how to live? Utter rubbish! The Colonel is learning that he can't win a measuring contest with either of them. He says, I've seen enough, now we'll do it my way. In his interrogation chamber, Fausta is still trying to make her case. I will gladly present my case to Zafiora. He would see instantly that this golden lasso is all we need to get the truth. The truth? <laughs> An island of women? Such a place wouldn't last a week. We have existed in peace and happiness for 26 centuries. <laughs> you give answers like that to the Fuhrer and he will have you both put away as mad. I do not see things ending well for this guy. Fraulein Grables, you are a woman of great intelligence and should not be taking orders from that man. Silence! Now I have had enough from both of you wonder women. And you with your supposed magic tricks. <laughs> the golden lasso, the magic belt. Nonsense! I wonder how he's going to spin that in his report. She takes down all the men, then she and Fausta square off. You were right all the time, Fraulein. Why do you listen to him now? This time, I must agree with the Colonel. You are an enemy of the Fatherland. Faust is a former Olympic medalist in what they didn't say. So this should be interesting. Or not. Outside, Steve has serious questions for Rojak. You're leading me through here for the third time. Now what's going on? What's this going on, Major? Is the conclusion of your mission. This is not the way it was planned. But I'm going to shoot you as a spy. You won't succeed. There's somebody behind you getting ready to crack your skull with a shovel. <laughs> you disappoint me. You think a member of the Nazi elite would fall for that old trick? It's never a trick. It's never a trick. You're on TV, dude, and on TV it's never a trick. While Steve is making his way in, Wonder Woman is making her way out. <laughs> Hands up, both of you. Well, what is this? Where's Wonder Woman? She's gone, Major. I'm not falling for that. I know you kidnapped her, and I know she's here. It's true. Wonder Woman has escaped. But you both, Major. You will be shot as a spy. She's having considerably more luck than he is. She takes the plane that Fausta brought her in and heads back to Washington. Hello. I can't find Steve this evening. Is he in with the general? He took a brief furlough, and he told you to take some time off, too. Didn't you get Steve's special delivered note? Oh, yes, but I thought he was back by now. Do you know where Steve went? He uh, asked me not to tell. So please be my friend, Diana. 
Don't ask. That resolve doesn't last very long. I can't believe this. The message center must have made a mistake. What is it, sir? Berlin Underground has just forwarded a message saying that Steve Trevor is a prisoner at Gestapo headquarters behind enemy lines. Something about uh, Operation Fräulein. Hedda, you told me that Steve is on furlough. I never thought he'd be captured. Etta, I think you'd better tell us everything you know. When it was all over, Etta spent the next ten years in prison for insubordination. The general tells Diana to take a few more days off, which is fine because she was going to anyway. Back at the Nazi base, the measuring contest is still going on. Major Treffer is our bait to recapture Wonder Woman. That's idiotic. Once out of here, Wonder Woman would never risk returning for a mere major. I have seen the looks she gives this man. And now that we have leaked the word of his capture to Washington, she will be back. And then we will have both mm. of America's greatest heroes. And he's still losing. Now that we have Wonder Woman back, I assure you that we will use a trapdoor and system to capture and hold her. Please, Fräulein, do not annoy me anymore with your amateur suggestions. I have the matter fell in hand. Every joke I can think of is a little too um, risque for this show, so make your own joke. I won't be held responsible for allowing Wonder Woman to escape twice. No, this time she must be destroyed. No. If the Vaterland can't learn the secrets, at least we can see to they are no use to America. Wonder Woman locates Steve's cell. That's his big plan, a moving wall. He's seen how strong she is, so let's just see how this plays out. That concludes this week's episode of Epic Fails, brought to you by Stupid Male Ego. These cables will lower 50,000 volts of electricity into the water. The colonel immediately tries to take over and says, Now, tell us your secret. If I speak, it will only be to the woman who captured me. She did not capture you. I am the commander here. You are my prisoner. I designed this water trap. And if I had not acted, this water trap would not have been used. For having spent centuries with no contact with men, Wonder Woman sure knows how to play the male ego. I will no longer tolerate any of your meddling interferences, my life. Grab her, Roger. Berlin will hear of this. Berlin will hear only that you allowed Wonder Woman to escape and that you died in my successful effort to recapture her. If Christopher George, who played Rojak, seems to be enjoying that a little too much, it might be because the actress playing Fraulein Grables is his real-life wife. How often do you get paid to grope your wife? Now do you see your real enemies? Roger, throw Fraulein Grables into the water tank. I will personally hold the switch. Now do you see how little you mean to them? And Linda Day George just got to beat the crap out of her real-life husband. Also nice work if you can get it. Fausta, we want to repay you. Come back to America with us. No, I, I cannot leave my homeland. But every Nazi in the country will be looking for you. And I will be looking for them. I must show the world that we are not all Kesselmans. Steve puts her in contact with the woman from the underground and away they go. Now it's just the two of us. Wonder Woman is afraid the General is going to be apoplectic over the way Steve got into Germany. 
But before leaving Gestapo headquarters, I opened Colonel Kesselman's safe. Our country now has a list of every double agent in the Nazi spy ring. I don't think the general will be too unhappy. <laughs> she might have guessed. They make goo-goo eyes at each other for a moment and then head home. In Steve's office, they're looking at the first report from Fausta. That's very dangerous work. I don't see how she does it. Maybe all women can do wonders if put to the test. That's exactly what Wonder Woman said. It is. I like this episode. I like the series as a whole so far. We have real, fleshed-out characters, even including Etta. We got to know her pretty well. Fausta is a strong, believable villain, and the Colonel is a believable foil for her. Really, I can't find any serious fault with this one. Within the world we've created, it's consistent, believable, and interesting. Well, believable except for Linda Day George's accent, which sounded more Russian than German. It was nice to see her get to play off her real-life husband a little, too. They did a lot of shows together like that because they just loved being together and working together. Sadly, it was all cut short when he died of a heart attack at the much too young age of 54. She was so heartbroken she gave up acting and disappeared from the public view. So I guess we'll never know if she ever learned to do a proper German accent. Until next time, I'm Irving, and you are now exiting Carter Tobia.